What in the world? Ah. Uh. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install vinyl siding. This is part two of a two-part series, and if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. This channel's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money, so be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and in return for making this video, I just need you to smash that like button, and especially if you found value in this video. Let's get started. In part one, you've seen me cut this corner to go around this bird box. Now, we need to cut some J-channel to go upside the gable to hide the cut ends of the siding. And in order to do that, we need to put a 712 on this piece of J channel to continue the run up the side of the gable. I'll show you how to do that. I got a full piece of J channel right here ready to go. And now what you need to do is grab your speed square and put a 712 with the angle going away from this top side. So go ahead and put your speed square on it. And you might have to waste a little bit of this uh, vinyl when you're using this speed square to get the angle right. So as you can see right here, I got a 712, right like that. In order to do it, you just line your common seven over here with the top piece of the J channel. And then it's gonna give us our angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. And I'm gonna cut it with a pair of 10 snips. And this J channel cuts really easy. So there it is, I can see there. I got a 712 on it. And now just take your 10 snips, cut it right out and this stuff like i said it's nice and warm out today it won't crack and it cuts really smooth like that and then cut the whole piece off and there we go we got our 712 ready to make a move against that corner let's go install it so in order to install this just butt it up against your f channel where your soffit is and slide it right down to your corner right like that and now we just put a nail every 16 inches across the uh, J channel to hold it into place and again don't nail nail it to where it's super tight you want to leave a little play in it because this stuff needs to expand and contract so that's what it's going to look like up close it's going to be nailed about every 16 inches and this part up here that's just hanging I get that once I get up higher on the scaffolding, it's a little safer to do. What I like to do is install the J channel on both sides of the gable, so that way I can go ahead and keep running my rows and don't have to think about J channel until I get up there pretty high. And there, as you can see here, I got a piece I got to put in here, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on. And what I'm going to show you next is how to cut the angle for the siding to go ahead and meet that J channel. As you can see, I got a row started already, and if you're wondering how to get the angle, of the gable I'm going to show you the easiest way to do that without having to think about it too much just go ahead and take a full piece of siding lay it up to where you're going to be level going across as if you're going to install it and then just take a scrap piece of siding and lay it right up against that J channel right like that and scribe that angle and that's going to be the angle of your gable that's going to be the easiest way to get it but I'm going to show you how you can do it without doing that as well. But that's the easiest way without having to think about it. But if you know the pitch of your roof, there's another way you can do it too. So the next easiest method involves a framing square. And if you know the pitch of your roof, which I do, all you got to do is you got a long side of your pitch and a short side. The long side is the side we want to make the angle against the gable. So in order to do that, let's say it's a 712. You just hold 12. Let's say we're going to use this top edge right on the top. So 12 inches there. So it's always going to be 12 inches on the long side. And then all you got to do is angle it to where it's a 712. Here's a seven inch mark. And then all you got to do is scribe that angle. Then that's going to be a 712 angle right here. So that's gonna be the long seven is what we call it. So you cut that off and that's gonna be your angle. So that's probably the next easiest way compared to what we did up on the roof. And this only applies if you know the pitch of the roof. And then the next easiest way would be just to take a speed square right here. So in order to use the speed square to get it, so let's say we know it's a 712. All right, so if we hold the seven, this is the common side right here. So if we know it's a seven, 12 that gives us a 30 degree angle roughly so you subtract 30 from 90 so the complementary angle so if you subtract 30 from 90 is going to be 60 degrees so if you come over here 
if you slide it over till we got 60 degrees using the degree mark, that's going to be our long seven right there. And to continue that mark, all you got to do is come over here, put your 60 degree to continue it like that because the speed square is not long enough. So right here is going to be the long seven. And right here's the long seven using the framing square. So you cut those out and that's going to be your angle. So here's the best part to no matter how you find your angle, after you cut your angle, you're going to have a scrap piece like this. So you're going to use this as a template to get your angle every time. So no more having to figure out what the angle is. So in order to do that, you just take it and slide it into the nailing flange. Well, the interlocking flange, and then that's your angle right there. So you can just use that just to go ahead and trace your angle. And then you never have to figure out the angle after that. You just use this as a template. And for the corresponding angle, you can just take it, flip it around like this, slide it up against the interlocking channel, and then that's your angle for the other side of the roof. So just a little tip to save you a ton of time. Pro tips are always welcome. I'm gonna walk you through how to finish up a run like this. So you come back under here and you slide your tape measure up into a piece of J channel and try to hook on the end of the piece of siding that's already installed come back here so it looks like we got 68 so we add an inch and a quarter so we want 69 and a quarter so unhook your tape now we're going to walk over here and i want to show you using that scrap piece how to do this so we know we want to come off this end because we need a factory end that's going to go into the other piece so hook on to that end Pull over 69 and a quarter. So as you can see here, we got 69. We just mark a quarter right at the bottom. So this is going to be on the bottom of the siding. And now you just take our template, slide it into that interlocking piece, and then line it up with that mark. So about right there. And then go ahead and scrub that line. And that's going to give us our angle without trying to figure it out again like I was explaining to you earlier and now that we got a way to a place to uh, cut on that mark now we need to get our 10 snips okay so we got our mark here so what I like to do first is go ahead and cut it square right there all right now it gives me a place to get my snips in and just cut on that line and then Fight it into that angle, and then sometimes it'll take two hands because there's a lot of vinyl right there to cut through. Then just keep cutting on that line. And this uh, this is something you'll learn on how to torque your snips while you're cutting because sometimes it doesn't want to go right down that line because of the way the siding's overlapped. All right, so now we got our piece of vinyl ready to go and sometimes you have these little frays you gotta snip off all right that looks good okay now let's go get this installed all right so right here i always take this corner first slide it up in it's that way it's kind of locked on the channel pull that j channel back and slide it right into it until it touches it and then i just work it across and snap it in as i go and then come back here all right you can hear it snap into place and always double check to make sure it slides like that to make sure we're all the way in okay and then i double check the angle make sure it all looks good and it does now we go through find our stud right here and look it's on a d or an f kind of straddling between it we'll try the f And that looks good it hits something solid and always find the stud this one sounds like it's more towards the end all right that looks good and now we come to the end and these trusses they're uh studs so to speak or every two foot compared to a wall it's every 16 on center so um you're not going to be able to hit exactly on that letter and again, you always leave a little play to give it room to shift. And that's how you install it when you're installing an angled piece.
now that we got this scrap piece we need to use it for the next starter on that side so instead of taking this piece and running it up into it like this we're going to flip it like this and this is going to be our starter for the next run so all you got to do is lay it like this or you can slide it and butt it up against the interlocking channel there so you just hold it and then scribe it just like you would the other side except it's flipped upside down and when you cut this out that's going to be our starter for this piece down here just wanted to let you know you can do it with the same piece of template so we came to the point to where we need to put the siding under this window so i got right here what is called utility trim all you gotta do is slide it tight up under the window cut it to the width of the window and just sits in there like that and then you just use roofing nails and put it in just like you would any other piece of vinyl and what this does it gives you a place to slide your siding up under to lock it in under this window so i'm going to show you how to cut around this window the easy way okay so say we got to cut around this window the best thing to do or the easiest way to figure it out there's several ways so I, what i like to do is go ahead and snap my siding into place here so after you snap your siding into place to where it's going to go just simply come over here and mark it to where it's going to go about a quarter inch below that window it's going to lock into this undersill trim and then that gives us our rip height now that we got high enough to where we got to continue this j channel i'm going to show you how to cut this j channel so if you come over to the end that it's going to butt into all you got to do is come back about an inch about right there always make a little mark and then take your snips come back here and cut this lip out about right there and then be sure to cut this piece out as well so you're going to have that cut out now you got to cut the back out about the same distance over about an inch it doesn't have to be exactly an inch but i always like to do at least an inch then cut it out like this so you're just left with the face a one inch piece of the face with the back cut out right like that so to install this all you got to do is slide this piece of j channel over the piece that you already had installed it's going to look something like that and just nail it every 16 inches like you did this piece now i'm going to show you how to finish the j channel up in this peak so the first thing you need to do is take a piece of j channel this end is going to be square on this side so just butt it up into the top corner come down here figure about an inch past the existing j channel you installed earlier and we're going to cut this out just like we did the bottom of the j channel down there in order to do this piece we need to put a 712 angle on it because the pitch of our roof is a 712 so to, in order to do that you need to use a speed square so come down here 712 is right there and go ahead and cut that angle right like that and now cut this nailing flange off and what we need to do here now is test fit it see what that looks like and that doesn't look too bad now come down here and we're going to give it an inch overhang roughly and what i like to do is mark right where it's going to intersect as well all right so you should have something like that your angle of your roof okay the last piece i've been striving to get to so you just snap this in but i'm going to show you something a little special you got to do to it compared to the other ones so after you get it snapped in and centered up really well that looks pretty good so there's no nailing flange so what you got to do you got to use what's called a aluminum fascia nail and i use this tool called a pea shooter let me see if i can find it here okay right here it is this is a pea shooter and all you got to do is load your nail into it like this reach up in there and you're going to drive that nail to hold that piece of siding in and that's the only time it's okay to use a nail on siding so it should look something like that 
try not to over nail it but that's all there is to it and now what we gotta do is tear the scaffolding down boy i wish that scaffolding went up as quick as it's coming down after i get this scaffolding down what i'm going to do is do a flat straight wall so that way you can see how to finish it up at the top now that we got our gable done I'm going to show you how to finish up along the top of a straight wall. So how you finish up along the top of a straight wall is different than how we just did that gable. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So the first thing you need to do is take a full piece of J channel and put it up against the existing F channel where our soffit is and butt it up against our corner. So something like that. So that's going to hide the top piece of the siding. So we'll tack this into place first. Now that our J channel is installed, we need to install what's called undersill trim. This is the same trim that we installed under the windows on that gable end. So all you gotta do to do this, you just slide it right up into the J channel and it's gonna line up, and I'll show you this up close, but the nailing flange holes, you wanna line up with the nailing flange holes on the J channel. When I say line it up with the nailing flange, so you can see here's the J channel nailing flange and this is the nailing flange for the utility trim or undersill trim, whatever you want to call it. Just line it up in the same holes with each other, like this. You can see our slots are lined up. And the reason why you do that is because it keeps the reveal of this undersill trim the same real reveal as the J channel. So it just gives you a better look instead of just stuffing it up tight into the top of the J channel. Now that we got our undersill and our J channel in, now we gotta rip this piece of siding down to go into the undersill. So to do this, we gotta get a measurement butt up to the undersill and down to the flange right here of the piece of siding below us. So we got about three and seven eighths. So what we gotta do is add three eighths to that. So we're gonna cut it four and a quarter. So we gotta rip this down, this piece down to four and a quarter and it's going to fill in this last piece of siding. Now that you got your piece ripped down, it's time to install it. So to do this, go ahead and slide it up in the utility trim and back in your corner. Give it a little gap away from your corner and snap it into place. Make sure it's up against that utility trim and just keep pushing it in and working your way across. And it should slide in relatively easy. And they make a tool called a snap lock tool it puts little rivets in here i mentioned this in the video before when i was doing under the windows and i don't put those in there and i never had a piece slide out from this um, utility trim so or under sill trim whatever you want to call it and that is locked into place and that is not going anywhere so now we just got to finish up this run and that's all there is to installing the final piece on top of a straight wall so when it's all said and done, that's what the top piece is going to look like. Nice and clean finish. I know we went over a lot of information, so if you have any questions at all, ask them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them as soon as possible. And that is all there is to installing vinyl siding on a gable end and a straight flat wall. And I want to say thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.